Hello, wonderful people. Welcome to part two of my tell all video about my accident and what happened to me back in November. Um, so, well, I don't script these videos, I kind of just jump on the bike and start yapping. So, <laughs> I'm trying to remember <laughs> where I left off what I said last. Um, so, so, I told you about uh, a car pulling out from a road, hitting me off my bike. Um, I've flown to the other side, well, I flipped over his car. I'm on the other side of the road. Um, I mentioned that I wasn't recording, sadly. So I didn't really have any evidence of it, which is pretty annoying. So what happened immediately after I got hit? So I'm on the floor and I don't move for a while because I wasn't knocked out, but I was just a bit dazed. Adrenaline kicked in and I kind of jumped up because I was literally in the middle of the road. So there was oncoming traffic on the other side of the road. The guy that hits me, he pulls on the opposite side of the road. He runs out and he's asking if I'm okay. He's apologizing profusely. You know, he's oh, I'm so sorry. I've never hit anyone before. This is the first time I've had an accident like this. I'm so sorry. What was I doing? You know, he, he knows it's all his fault. He's been super apologetic. And I asked him to help me move my bike uh, out of the way because my bike was just laying in the middle of the street. At this point, nobody uh, called anyone. Nobody called any police or ambulance or anything like that. I guess because they saw I was up. <laughs> um, so they didn't think they needed to. Uh, and to be honest, nobody even stopped other than the guy that hit me. <laughs> no one stopped. I was just out of breath. I felt like I was winded and I could barely speak properly. And I just kind of needed to sit down. I couldn't really even stand up for long. I just felt so horrible. Like I had no wind in me whatsoever. Like I just... I don't know how to explain it. It's like I got a gut punch, but like times a hundred. <laughs> Uh, we barely moved the bike out of the way <laughs> and I just was standing there and I felt like I was going to collapse like I'm just standing there and the guy's asking me are you okay do you want me to do anything and I'm just there like huh, huh. at this point my brain was just mush as well like I'll be honest I I do remember kind of what happened but my brain was so mush like I wasn't responding to questions properly it was taking me a really long time to process anything if I was in my right mind I would have done things differently because I made a few mistakes because I was so out of it um, so after I well I never really caught my breath but I was still winded <laughs> uh, up until I went hospital but um, when I could somewhat start talking a bit more um, I went over to the guy because he was just sitting in his car panicking I asked for his name and I asked for his number but he said he didn't have his license on him which is a bit suspicious, first of all. He said he had no license on him, but he could get me that information as soon as he goes home. Also, the car he was driving wasn't his. And the picture of the car I showed in part one, I actually blurred, I, or I blacked out some information on the car. I blacked out the license plate, and I also blacked out the logo that was on the car. But now I'm gonna show you <laughs> what was behind what I covered up. And as you can see here, it's a Just Eat logo. So he was in a delivery car for Just Eat, and that's what he hit me with. And he said he didn't have any uh, insurance, but the car was insured through Just Eat, and he would tell me, he would have to go home and phone his manager to tell me who the insurance was. Again, very suspicious. So really, he's given me his name. That could be any name. A phone number which to be fair I, I did confirm on the spot was his number uh, but again it, it's not exactly easy to tie someone down just based on a number and I got his email address as well because that's what he said he would send me the information on however at this point in my previous video I said that the police and the ambulance had been called at this point no one had been called as yet and all the meanwhile my pain is getting much much worse and my head is getting more scrambled after we talk a bit the dude who hit me he says hey i'm gonna send you all the information i'm gonna email it all to you all the insurance stuff if anything just call me 
I'm gonna go find out from my manager who the insurance is, da 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 da. And I'm like, you know what? Great, thank you. Because at the time, I just couldn't concentrate on anything. I just thought I was gonna run out of breath and just stop breathing. <laughs> um, and again, my brain was so scrambled, it didn't occur to me, hey, I should call the ambulance because I can't breathe properly. And to be fair, the guy did say, hey, are you okay? Do you need me to do anything? And I did say, no, no, no. Because I just, <laughs> I didn't want to engage in conversation. I just felt like I needed to conserve all my energy and just kind of, as I said, recollect myself. Uh, which again was a mistake. I should have said, hey, can you stay here with me, please? You need to stay here until the police gets here or until something, you know what I mean? That's what I should have done. So then he said he's going to take off, which I didn't object to because I'll be honest, one, I was just a bit silly and naive and you know, he seemed so helpful and so, you know, upfront. And also I saw he was in a company vehicle and I have the license plate for the company vehicle and I have his name and number and email address and all of this. I'm like, okay, I, I, I don't see how we can somehow get away with this. He's in a company vehicle. I mean, I have everything I need, right? I, I, I don't see how exactly he's going to get away with this. <laughs> so I didn't really mind too much that he was leaving. And also, uh, I was just too out of it to, you know, to think about what I was doing. I was just, again, as I said, I was out of it, mate. So he leaves and then my bike won't start. So I called my parents, actually, and my brother. Um, told them what had happened. I told them um, I was okay. They could clearly hear that I couldn't talk properly over the phone. They knew something was up. So they, because they were actually in their right mind, <laughs> they called the police and the ambulance. My family actually got there first before uh, anyone else did, before the ambulance or the police. And to show how scrambled my brain was, <laughs> my family were asking me questions and I just wasn't responding to them. I just wasn't, or my answers weren't making any sense. Like it was just, like I remember one particular instance where my brother, he was, and my brother, he came in so clutch, like he really helped me out a lot. So my brother was trying to tell me, hey, can you pass me your phone so I can get information from your phone for this, that, and the other. And I was just staring at him like, uh, we're, we're just doing gibberish or just not even saying anything. I was just looking at him. And the funny thing is, whilst I was doing that, I was aware that's what I was doing, but I couldn't stop doing it. Like I was just so out of it and zoned. And my brother looked at me and just smiled and went, don't worry, mate, it's okay. <laughs> like he, he just knew I was not there. Like I was not present. Like I don't know. I've never had experienced that before, but I was just so out of it. So the ambulance got there before the police did and the ambulance saw me and they were like, yeah, you need to go hospital right now. <laughs> so they took me to the hospital actually right before the police got to the scene. The police were able to speak to me on the phone whilst I was on my way to the hospital. So anyway, I get to the hospital. I have to do a bunch of scans, all of this stuff that I said in the last video. That's when the pain really started to hit. Um, a little funny tidbit. <laughs> Uh, when I was in the hospital, uh, they were meant to put me up to this drip, like, you know, like for painkillers and stuff. And they didn't do it properly. So the drip wasn't dripping. <laughs> like it wasn't connected to me properly. So uh, I wasn't getting any of the pain relief. So I was laying in the, this bed for hours and I'm still in pain. And the doctor comes in like just before I'm about to go home and he goes, how do you feel? And I'm like, I'm in a lot of pain. And he's like, what do you mean? you've got the painkillers and he looks at the drip and he's like oh it's not even dripping sorry <laughs> i was like oh great i've been laying here in immense pain for ages <laughs> and no one checked to see if the drip was actually dripping i went home with like no pain relief but anyway uh the conversation i had with the police on the phone earlier on my way to the hospital i gave them all the information for the dude that i had they were actually able to establish uh communication with him and they were talking to him and they were you know they were making progress in that area however where things went south i believe is that <laughs> the police said that they are intending to prosecute him for dangerous driving or something i forgot exactly what it was they wanted to get him on but their intentions were to prosecute the dude and i think they made him aware of that before they actually got a hold of him so i think because they told the dude <laughs> they want to prosecute him for dangerous driving <laughs> uh the dude just stopped responding to them i mean all they had was a name and a number and an email address and they had 
details for a car but they weren't his car it was a company's car so it it, it, it wasn't yes it may have seemed like enough information but it actually kind of wasn't enough information <laughs> uh to guarantee they would get a hold of him so he just kind of stopped responding which was a bit annoying when i told my insurance what happened uh my insurance uh I, I told my insurance that I wanted to claim through the third party insurance because I don't want to make another claim through my insurance because if you've watched my channel for a while you would know that my CBR 500R back in 2021 got stolen and because I made a claim for that my insurance skyrocketed, the premium skyrocketed uh, and I could barely afford any insurance for my 650R and I didn't want that to happen again so I was trying everything to not make another claim on my own insurance so I wanted to claim on the third party insurance so I tell my insurance the details of the car and they go oh that car is uninsured <laughs> and I'm like how the, how the heck is the car uninsured it's, it's a company car for just eat like what do you mean I get in contact with the police the police say the exact same thing yep there's no insurance for this car in the meantime though the dude who hit me he says to me the insurance is uh zurich 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 i don't know how you say it but supposedly there's no insurance for whatever reason it then takes maybe about a month before the insurance could figure out that it is actually zurich the car's registered to i don't get how that happened or why that happened so again i'm like okay great they know who the car's insured with uh brilliant i can claim through the third party insurance because to be honest yes the dude hit me but because i was the one who got hit and i was there I, I it was obvious the guy did not hit me on purpose obviously that was an inconvenience for both of us so the whole thing about trying to prosecute the guy for hitting me i wasn't really too bothered about all of that in fact i didn't even really want that to happen i just kind of wanted our insurances to do with it just like i'll i'll pursue the claim through your insurance and we just both go our separate ways like I'm not trying to get you arrested or <laughs> prosecuted it, 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 Accidents happen, you know I know you weren't trying to kill me I just kind of wanted his insurance to sort things out That was where my real beef was with We're just going back on ourselves now <laughs> but, uh, I'm actually on my way to work I'm just kind of taking a detour before I go to work <laughs> So my insurance is like Yeah, we're going to claim through their insurance Great And they try and contact Zurich And this is back in like December kind of time And pretty much let's fast forward all the way to today which is now march march of 2024 and zurich has not responded to a single inquiry from my insurance they're just completely ghosting my insurance they're just not responding at all i don't understand how that works i don't see how a whole insurance company can just refuse to respond to an inquiry from another insurance company so i'm unable to claim through the third party insurance because the third party insurance just doesn't want to respond get this it gets worse you think okay fine the insurance doesn't want to respond but hey you got hit by a company car a big company car uh no not the car was physically small but i mean the company is big just eat you've got their license plate the car is clearly a just eat car why don't you just contact just eat you want to guess what just eat isn't responding to anything either just eat is completely resp uh, just blanking everything even the police the police tried to get in contact with Just Eat on multiple times because of this and they're just not responding to anything it's like what how bad can my luck be that the third party insurance I'm dealing with doesn't want to respond the company that owns the car doesn't want to respond it's like what how is that possible how can everybody just not respond and get this because they told the dude who they were prosecuting for hitting me that they're gonna prosecute him guess what he did he stopped responding as well so now the guy that hit me his insurance and the company he was working for have all refused to respond to the situation so i'm just left with nothing so this is turning out to be a crazy situation and i don't know how big this is gonna get or what's gonna turn out to it i do have solicitors that are working on this so uh I'm just in their hands now doing what they're telling me to do and they're trying to get it all sorted out but it's it's just a crazy situation and uh, looking back the best thing to do would have been to call the police 
straight away to make sure they were on the scene and they got their hands on the dude <laughs> because I, it would have been a lot easier for the situation um, if they were there right then but after you've been smacked off your bike sent flying in the air land on your back smacking your head on the floor <laughs> and your brain is scrambled I wasn't thinking clearly uh, which is really unfortunate so pretty much in the end um, I've had to just recently I've had to just with the advice of my solicitors just claim through my own insurance which is the one thing I didn't want to do because <laughs> Which I'm never going to be able to find insurance again having to claim through my own insurance My insurance did in fact write off the CBR 650R So uh, my bike is gone <laughs> uh, You won't be seeing that bike anymore sadly Which is a shame But anyhow You're pretty much back up to date with current time Yeah It's just the most unlucky situation That I wish I handled differently But at the end of the day, I have to be grateful and thankful that I'm one, still alive that I'm two, pretty much back to full health um, and three, that I can ride like, I'm still riding, you know and I am still able to make some sort of claim even if it is through my own insurance so it's not like I'm completely left with nothing, right? so it could be worse, it could be much worse so I'll take it, I'm not going to complain too much <laughs> That does mean that I'm gonna have uh, to give this bike back at some point. Now that the claim has pretty much been settled, uh, I'm not gonna have this for much longer. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm not looking to buy a bike straight away. I need to plan for that. I can't just, I know I'm getting some money from the insurance, but I'm actually planning on moving. So, <laughs> Uh, there's a lot to consider with how I use my money so to be honest I know I kind of made my last video as my comeback video but hey I'm back to making content um, uh, very soon I'm gonna be gone again you might get a few videos of this bike and then I won't have a bike for a while I can tell you what my next video is gonna be about though so you know the whole Rizoma, uh, Rizoma mirror situation I had a whole video it's still up actually about what mirrors should I put on my 650R well, I did actually put the Rizomas on my 650R. I got the self mirrors. I got them in the end. Um, I put them on the bike. They were beautiful. I loved them. And then a few days later, <laughs> uh, the bike got smashed. And yes, uh, I think you could see in the pictures that one of the Rizomas did indeed get bent and folded <laughs> to oblivion. Uh, yeah, I just bought really expensive mirrors for them to break instantly just another bit of bad luck on the situation you know but the good news is is that I did record a whole video about them on my 650R which means uh, there is one more video one more entire video for you to enjoy with the 650R which I will be uploading next on my channel so stay tuned for that video um, but until then, uh, thank you for watching and I am very late for work so <laughs> I'm going to sign off and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.